Is the Airbnb algorithm myth or truth? It's absolutely truth. You need to follow it. You need to get serious about it. And if you're not getting your occupancy and rates where you need to be, the algorithm is the first place to start. If you like this video and you see your algorithm just shooting up because of that, make sure to comment and subscribe to this channel. Yes, guys, the Airbnb algorithm is a real thing. It is absolutely imperative that you understand it, that you go after it, and that you put some attention to this on a at least every other day basis so that your, your listings will click. And so if you're wanting to do that, if you're wanting to raise your income, raise your occupancy rates, and get to the place that you want to be, you're probably also going to love Price Labs. We're going to talk about Price Labs here in a little bit, but it is a tool that has helped me to be able to earn almost as much as an extra 20% plus get more occupancy in my places with way less headache, way less work. If you're interested in getting that started, make sure to go and click down in the description below because Price Labs, honestly, and these guys from a customer support standpoint are awesome. I used to use Beyond Pricing. Uh, they were good too, but Price Labs, it just took it to the next level for me. So I would definitely go check them out. It's a free 30-day trial if you click on the link in the description below. And with that, let's jump into it. The very first thing is obvious. People talk about it all the time. It's super host. I'm not even actually going to call this number one because it is the most obvious. So this is the pre one through five. Um, Superhost is super easy to get to. Uh, if you're not a super host, you just need to get to these minimums right here. As you see, 4.8 over star, star rating. Um, you know, you want to be over a 90% response rate. And you also want to have uh, 10 completed stays or 100 nights over three plus stays. So in other words, if you have 10 one night stays, that works. Or if over 100 nights, you have at least three stays, that works as well. And then a cancellation rate of less than 1%. As you see, these are all ones that we have. If you're watching on the YouTube channel right now, you're seeing all of the things that we have on our profile. Cancellation rate is not even touching 1%. That's easy. Response rate, it should be at, at least 95%. That is such an easy thing to be able to control. So Superhost, get to it. Does it have a huge impact? No, it doesn't have a huge impact, but it's so simple to get to that it is definitely imperative that you get to it to just help out a little bit. But with that being said, let's give you the real number one. And this shouldn't be much of a surprise professional pictures. Now, there's a lot of people out there that say, well, I don't want to do professional pictures because I feel like it leads people on and it makes my place look better than it really is. Get out of that mindset right away. Everything looks better in pictures than it does in real person. Um, if you go and you try to buy a house on the MLS, what happens? You see professional pictures that attracts you to the place you show up. You're like, okay, it's still good. It's just not quite as good as the pictures. Um, or if you think about, you know, going to Yosemite, going to, um, you know, Hawaii, going to all these places, it's like, oh my gosh, these pictures make it look amazing. Is it still amazing in person? Yeah, it is. It's just those pictures were like, you know, a next level. So it's expected that you have professional pictures. When people see professional pictures, they know they're professional pictures. However, in the Airbnb algorithm, what's happening is they're looking, literally, they're looking at the pixels. They're looking at, is this a crisp picture? If it's not a crisp picture like these, then they're going to shove them down towards the bottom of the, the searches. So just for example, this is one of our top producing properties. And I'm showing you one in Fresno, California. If you were to search right now, uh, this is actually Clovis, I should say. Uh, if you were to search right now in the Clovis area, it'd be one of the first ones to pop up for a couple different reasons. We're super hosts. We've got a 4.9 star rating on this property. And we also have professional pictures. Now let's take a different example. I just went to Phoenix right now. And I went to, um, I did a couple different things. I did entire place. And then for the filters, I did three bedrooms and I also did a house. So this is filtering it to those specific things. And what I did is I went to the last, one of the last pages, no, it is the last page of the search. And I just assumed what I would see is probably not going to be as good as the first page. Now, this right here, you can see this one has a, a really dark picture for the very front. Uh, this one right here has a big tree hanging in front of the, the, uh, the house. 
And then some of these though, you're like, well, actually that's pretty nice, but we can start to see some, some trends on the last page versus the first page. Let's go to the first page. Now the first page, this is actually one of our listings. The reason it pops up so high here is because it's a brand new listing. Brand new listings also get shoved up to the top because Airbnb wants to see their new host successful right away. So that's another thing. And it's completely side tangent there, by the way. Um, but you can see in the this very first one, there's some really nice looking places. Now, this one, again, I don't think if you if you're looking at this, you're like, well, that's not a the best appealing picture. No, but it's a new listing, only six reviews, and it's a really low price. So it's a combination of a lot of different things of why they're showing up on the first page. But a pretty common thing that you're going to see is most of the pictures are going to be pretty solid. Now, the difference here, if we go back to the last page, as we go to one specific listing, and I'm not looking to call anyone out or anything. I just want you to see why possibly this person is on the last searchable page rather than the first one. So let's just compare. If we bring up all of our pictures for this person, you're gonna see there's a lot of really close up pictures. These are really obviously taken with cell phones and there's not a lot going on. Plus there's not many pictures. I think it, it in all, we'll, if we click on it, we can see there's only 17 pictures. So professional pictures plus the number of pictures make a difference. Plus, we'll also see that this is a blurry picture. When there are blurry pictures, Airbnb picks that up and they start to shove your listing down towards the bottom. So don't do blurry pictures. Whereas with this listing that I just shown you, they're bright pictures. They are clean. They're crisp. They're uh, wide angle lens. They're not cell phone pictures. This is what makes a big difference. So professional pictures, do them. It's a small investment to make, should cost you anywhere between $150 to $200. You can get that made up with one night booked on Airbnb. All right, the next thing that we're doing is we're going to edit our listings at least two to three times a week. And why do we do that? Well, it's really simple. So first of all, if we are active hosts, Airbnb likes seeing active hosts. They like seeing people that are continuously communicating with their guests, that are continuously updating pictures, that are continuously changing their prices. And if you're doing that, then Airbnb sees the, that you're really serious about your business. They start to move it up in the searches. So one easy thing you can do is go to all your listings and look under the to-do. Is there anything that's listed under the to-do? Now, if you have for us, like this one, add tax, we don't have to add tax quite yet in our area. In Phoenix, we do. Um, those are the two markets that I do the most work in. But one thing I'm looking for is update. If I click on update, it'll take me to that listing and it'll show me specifically what it wants me to update. So it looks like I don't have all my safety considerations. So do I have a pool? No. Nearby a lake? No. Climbing or place structure? No. Heights with no rails? And I'm just making sure that everything is selected because it's telling me to update that. So now I save that. Now, if I go back to the listings and I go to that same one, let's go to it. Come on. It'll now show that there is nothing to update except for add tax, which again, we don't have to add here. So that's one thing. Now, if I go to any of these listings, what I'm going to see on the left hand side while I'm in a listing is it shows the name of the listing, shows the internal name of the listing, and it shows when it was modified recently. Um, now, I'm looking at these and I'm saying, okay, does it show more than two days? If it's within two days, I'm good. And I'm ignoring the red ones because the red ones are unlisted. So let's just go back to the ones for today. It says yesterday, today, 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 yesterday, and a day ago, two days ago. Okay, now I'm looking for, does anything say three days ago? Um, it looks like we're all set. So that means that all of our listings are within the last two days done some sort of edit has been done now i'm going to just take this one for example the updated spacious uh fifth street studio it says two days ago let's pretend it said three days ago what i would do to go in here it's super simple guys this is so simple what does it mean to edit something it's as simple as well let's just go ahead and move a picture 
So if I move a picture, let, and by the way, the first five pictures, I always like to keep at least the first five pictures because that's what shows up on the Airbnb listing. So if we go back to the Airbnb listing, you see those first five pictures, right? Those are really important pictures to, to have set. So I'm trying not to change those very much, but if I, you know, move one of the first five pictures to a different location within the first five, that's fine. Um, what about, and I like to do 3d tours. You can see that. Um, but just moving a couple of these pictures makes a big difference and it'll show that you edited your profile. And then if you even want to something as simple as just going to the description and deleting periods, all right, adding commas, uh, changing an and to an ampersand. These are things that will show that you have edited the listing and we're good to go. In fact, if I refresh the page, I now see that this one was edited today. Look at that. It pops right up to the front. So this is an easy way to make sure that you are in favor with the Airbnb algorithm. Next, save it as a favorite. Yes, you can do this personally. And you can also have a, you can do your, have your VAs do this. You can have your friends and family do this. All you have to do is go to the preview of the listing. You're going to, um, if you're going to send it out to people, all you have to do is copy and paste up until the uh, rooms dash the like six or seven numbers here. Nothing after the question mark needs to be copied. Just copy that, send it to some friends, say, hey, can you be a favorite? Can you just click the save the heart button on this? And when you do that, you add it to one of your wish lists and boom, it's been saved. That right there makes a difference. And that is your third tip for being able to be in the Airbnb algorithm. Super simple. The opportunities tab is number four. So opportunities can be found in the performance tab. So if we go to performance and then after going to performance, we click on opportunities, which we're already at, you'll notice that there's all these opportunities that you can go to appealing listings, flexible booking, pricing, hospitality tools. We're just going to stay on all bookings or all opportunities. And we're going to see that a number of opportunities in my uh, sets of, or my more portfolio are being done. Now, am I doing all of them? No, I'm not doing all of them because I don't want to allow pets at my place. Um, most of our people that we host don't ask for a crib, so I'm not offering a crib. Um, we do welcome short stays. Not sure why it doesn't say that we welcome short stays. I think that is between one to three days is the, the average. A lot of our places do have that. So um, with that being said, there's some things based on your market that really make a difference. Now, offer self-check-in, host longer stays, open popular dates, let guests book six months out. That's really easy to do. You can change that in all your settings. If I, you'll notice, so you're saying, well, Kyle, if opportunities are so important, why do you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them not even done on any of your listings? Well, I'll tell you why in my portfolio, in my location of uh, mainly Fresno here, we have a 93 to 95% occupancy rate. We're already doing so many other things in the algorithm that are working for us that we don't have to do all these things. Now, if I drop down to 85%, just randomly one month or in a couple months, maybe I start looking at these opportunities a little harder and say, maybe we should add a crib. Maybe we should you know, make sure to figure out why this short-term stays is not popping up. Maybe we should offer weekly discounts and early bird discounts and monthly discounts. Maybe we should start doing those things. But right now, because our occupancy rates are so high, we don't have to do those things in this market. So there are some things that I'm teaching you here that are you know, the rules and then the exceptions and just a case-by-case -case scenario. But it doesn't hurt you to have as many of these opportunities done as possible. And then number five, and probably... The most important is, are you priced correctly? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you specifically, if you remember, we were looking at this listing right here, the stunning large home in quiet Clovis neighborhood. Um, this one does really well for us. It's a three bedroom, two bath. It's getting uh, on average close to $200 per night. It's booked all the time. People love it. It's got a 4.9 star rating. So is it priced correctly? Let's take a look. 
I go to Clovis, okay? I, I typed in in the map Clovis. This is my listing right here. And then I'm gonna go to type of place, entire place. And by the way, I'm gonna show you three different tools that we're using to price this out. So number one is Airbnb. We're going entire place and then more filters. We're gonna do the number of beds that it has. We're gonna start off with Superhost. And then we're also going to go house, okay? So recapping that entire place, and then the more filters, we're doing the bedroom count. We're doing the, um, we could even do the bathroom count if we wanted to, but I don't want to do that right now. We're going to do more options is the super host. And then we're going to do in a house rather than an apartment or anything like that. So here's all of my competition within this area. Now, if you notice, mine pops up first. And that's not just because it's my profile. It's because it's within the Airbnb algorithm. So I can look on the map here on the right-hand side, or I can look over here on the left-hand side and see uh, what the competition is. Now, I'm priced it, it says on average 178 per night. Right next door to me is 246 per night. And right next door to me is also 295 per night. So I have some room to probably boost this average nightly rating. Um, I also look over here and I see 132 a night. I see 140 a night. And I say, okay, I'm kind of somewhere in the middle. I probably have some room to improve my pricing and bring it up. But if I was priced at, let's say $400 and I'm not getting booked and I noticed that everything else is at least $100 cheaper than me in the area with the same qualifications, well, there's my reason that I'm not in the Airbnb algorithm. I'm being dropped down because I'm so, so highly priced compared to everyone else. But in looking at this, I've learned a little something that maybe I could bump my price up to an average of 215 per night um, and still get booked uh, because my competition is still a little higher priced than I am. So that's the first way I would do it. The second way that you could also do it is by going to AirDNA. So I'm just going to show you a free version of AirDNA, and I'm going to type in Clovis, California. And... By going to Clovis, now it's going to show a little bit more specific rates rather than the, um, the rates that I just showed you on Airbnb. Because what Airbnb is doing when I'm looking at this is it's taking a year-long average and it's combining that and saying it's 178. But what, what that's doing is it's, it's future date. Now, this AirDNA is showing us past dates. It's showing what has already been collected, not what is it going to do. So... Um, Let's see here. I want to click out of this. Um, it's asking me to sign up. So I'm just going to log in with my account here. And when I log in, it shows me Clovis. And I'm going to, again, do the same thing. I'm going to unclick these two little doohickeys here. And then I'm going to just do the three bedroom. And I'm looking the same area. And I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm probably gonna find mine right around here. Yeah, there's ours. And I'm gonna look at the daily rate. Okay, so this one actually says 217. Remember what the other one said? It said 178. So again, AirDNA is what has been collected. Airbnb is what is being priced out for the future. So what has been collected is 217, not 178 like this says. But then next door, 242. Okay, I'm a little closer to that price than I originally thought I was. Because if I look at just Airbnb, that same one was saying 246, whereas this one is saying 242 and mine saying 217, okay? Then I'm looking at, again, all I'm trying to do is, am I collecting right around the same amount as other ones? Now, I'm not gonna look at these ones with zero reviews. Um, I'm not gonna look at the ones with only 4.5 star reviews. I'm gonna look at the ones that are legitimate. And so, Really, the legitimate ones are this one right here, five star reviews, 211, and then right here, 242, 10 reviews, and mine's at 217. So I'm actually pretty well priced for what I've already collected. So I feel good now about where my pricing is at. Um, then on Price Labs, that's the third tool that I'm using. And this is helping me to be able to automatically price everything. So again, my, this listing that we're looking at is called Dearborn. And what I can do here is I can go to my base price and then my minimum price. So my base price is 153, but what it's doing is it's going to calculate all these different things that will allow me to, you know, because you say, well, I thought you just said that you were at 178. Now you're saying 240, 
or just, what was it? 217. And now you're saying 153. What's with all the differences? Well, this base price of 153 is what I'm telling it to start at. And then it's going to calculate all these different factors based on demand, holidays, weekends, day of the week. And it's going to tell me what it's actually going to price my stuff at. So right now, I have a base price of 153. And if I just hover my, my pricing tool or my, my arrow over this, it'll show me why it comes up with the price of 184. Um, it shows that the uncustomized price is 230 with the price default discounts, it brings it down to 202, the market occupancy, the seasonality, the demand factor. And then here's the biggest thing right here, oops, is the orphan day. The orphan day is what's bringing it down about 20% because it's a Friday by itself. So what I'm basically looking at is the reason this is priced so low is because it's a, a, an orphan day. Whereas everything else here, a lot of the reasons that they're priced lower is demand factor, uh, listing occupancy factors. Um, and so for that reason, these are going to be priced low. But then, oh, wow, look at this. This is priced high, 197, 204, 243, higher demand. And all this is doing is it's allowing me to go out and automatically price my property. So everything you're seeing here is not a suggested price. It is what is actually being priced currently. And so I can set a lot of different factors over here on my customizations that if I want to upcharge people during, you know, uh, if they're trying to book 60 days out, I can do all these different things with it that make it really easy and automated for me. So my pricing now and by the way, the great thing about this, remember how I told you you need to edit things on a daily basis? Well, your pricing is being changed on almost a daily basis through this automated tool, which means you don't have to do as much editing on your end. So these three tools will help you to understand, am I priced correctly? And again, Price Labs allowing you to be able to do this all on your own or all on their own so that you don't have to go in and do all this yourself because how much time and effort would that take if you had 30 listings and you were having to price every single one differently on different days and you're guessing, it's not gonna work out well. So again, go down to the link below if you are watching on the YouTube channel in the description for Price Labs, you can get your Price Labs free trial started right away. And if you do that, then you'll start to be able to see, oh my gosh, this is making my life so much easier. My occupancy rates are going up. My prices are going up. And I'm able to know for sure, am I pricing things the right way? So go do that. Get started. These are the five ways to be able to get started in Airbnb's algorithm to make sure that you're clicking at the top.